Oh, Reboot, how I love thee. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, Reboot was a 90s cartoon series that was fully CGI. It was the first of its kind, even before Toy Story came out, about the characters who live inside our computers, that there's basically this artificial intelligence, a whole world of people living inside the computer that we're not aware of. And they are only loosely aware of us. We're like gods to them. They don't really understand us. They just call us the user. Like, they don't even know there are multiple users. They think there's just one user, like a god who created everything and who sends games down every now and then for reasons they don't understand. Which is quite a, a unique and novel uh, concept, really, for a show. Now, just a brief introduction to the characters. You've got Bob, who's a guardian, who's kind of a policeman, basically. Dot, who's a female sprite. And her little brother, Enzo, who idolises Bob. And then you've got a lot of binomes, which are these kind of little robot-looking characters which were basically created because it was cheaper and easier to animate than it was to animate humanoid characters, but they do gradually introduce more humanoid type sprites as the show progresses. We get Andrea and Mouse, Ray Tracer, Matrix. Um, then for the bad guys, we've got Megabyte, who's a virus. He's this really suave, sophisticated guy, but at the same time, when he wants to, he can let rip. He's quite bestial when his temper gets the better of him big muscular robotic kind of looking character his sister hexadecimal who's basically like a witch she's very powerful but she's completely insane and megabyte he relies more on his army and underlings to do his bidding then we do get introduced to a few other bad guys like damon for instance is a super virus and we meet a few other minor viruses as well in season three and they live in a city called mainframe which is inside the computer, inside someone's computer, it could be your computer. That's kind of the, the initial gimmick of the show, is that you can imagine this is going on inside your computer. And there are, for every computer, there's another system, and for every system is basically a city. So every single computer in the world has a little city inside it. And then somewhere there's the supercomputer, which is basically like the capital city. And all these systems are policed by the Guardians. Now, when it first came out, I actually wasn't very taken with it. The first season, it was really restricted, not in terms of animation because of the technology of the time and the cost of it, but also in terms of the storytelling because the network censors really restricted the writers a lot. They weren't allowed to show any peril. They weren't really allowed to show the female form in any way. So they had to give Dot, the female, the main female character, a mono breast as it was known by the animators. And unfortunately that caused me to not really give the show a chance. I watched one or two episodes and I think I caught the episodes that were quite throwaway. So I wasn't interested, gave up on it. However, luckily for me in season two, I gave it another chance. Now with season one, about 50% of the episodes are quite interesting and 50% are pretty throwaway, somewhat silly storylines. Um, now, if you've got to the end of season four and you're a huge fan of the show, going back to season one and seeing these characters that you've got affection for is enjoyable, even if the episodes aren't as good. And I wouldn't say any episodes are bad, just if you're trying to get into the show, season one probably isn't where to start, to be fair. Now, there are some good episodes, though. There's an episode called The Medusa Bug, which uh, gives us a really good introduction to Hexadecimal, a female virus slash bad guy in the show. Um, there's an episode that introduces the crew of the Saucy Mare, these pirates, basically, and it's fun to see them interacting with Bob because later on in season three, they'll come back in a big way, but, in, but working with different characters. The Tearing, which is the first ever episode, isn't too bad either. It's uh, nothing special necessarily, but it does set up the world quite well. And the two-part season finale is where you can see the show starting to evolve. They start to have a slightly more mature storylines, and it's a two-parter, so they were able to do a bit more with it. And it did the thing that a lot of 90s animated shows did. I know uh, Batman animated series did this, Gargoyles did this, um, Ninja Turtles did this. There's probably about a dozen cartoon series that had an episode where you'd see an alternate reality or it would be a dream and you'd see basically what the world is like if the bad guys won. There'd be main characters would be killed off. Shit would hit the fan, basically. 
and it was always a chance for the writers to, to really push the envelope because at the end of the day, at the end of the episode, they could say, oh, well, it was just a dream. Oh, well, it was just an alternate reality. It's just a possible future. And I always really enjoyed episodes like that. And we get that with the season one finale. And in this episode, we basically see Mainframe, which is the city which the show is based in, if Megabyte, the main bad guy, took over and he turned it into Megaframe. And this is something that we will actually see come to pass by season three. So it's a nice bit of foreboding here as well. And when we move on to season two, the animation's a little bit better and the storylines are starting to get more mature. Now, I didn't get into season two until about halfway through. I think there was just nothing else on TV at the time. It was after school, so I just put it on in the background and I started to get quite keen on it. I thought, yeah, this, this isn't too bad actually. There's a decent amount of action. The characters are likable enough. And thank God I did, because once we get to the last few episodes of season two, it really ups its game. They start to introduce an ongoing story arc, which back in the 90s, this was very rare in animated shows. Through the 80s and 90s, I loved Transformers and He-Man, Master of the Universe, uh, Ninja Turtles, all these cartoon shows, but they were all very episodic, you know. They might have the odd two-parter here and there, but that was it. There wasn't much ongoing continuity. So this was, I think, the first time I'd experienced an ongoing story arc in an animated show as a kid, and that really grabbed me. I was so impressed that they were doing this, and... For anyone who maybe watched a bit of Reboot as a kid and gave up on it in season one, as I did, and I think a lot of people did unfortunately, after season one the viewership did seem to go down, and I just wish that people had held on until the end of season two, because if you are feeling like a bit nostalgic about the show, maybe I should go back and watch a few episodes, give it a go, start at the end of season two, the last few episodes, it's really the last six episodes where they start setting up the ongoing story arc. In Painted Windows, they drop a few hints of what's to come. They have Mike moving in, Mike the TV as a character who moves in with Hexadecimal, and some of the soldier characters are gossiping with each other and talking about how the web has been invading other systems. And this is all setting up what's to come in the finale. But for me, it was in the episode Gigabyte where the show really stepped up its game and started becoming more action orientated, even more mature. So even though it's the last six episodes that start the story arc, I think you could pretty much come into the show in the episode Gigabyte and know enough to, to carry on with it and maybe go back to the prior episodes once you've gotten into the show. Because once we get to the last two episodes of season two, man, at the end of Trust No One, it had been kind of an X-Files parody. It was a, a bit of Alien thrown in there as well, sort of a slight horror vibe to it. Obviously, for a kid's show, I'm not saying it's scary or anything, but as a fan of horror, even as a kid, I liked that they were going for that kind of vibe with this episode, but it ended with such a cliffhanger with Bob. Anyone who's seen it will know what I'm talking about, where Bob is just hovering there saying, this is it, Fong. Prepare for war. And I could not have been more excited as a kid. <laughs> I was like, hell yeah, I need to see where this is going. And it did not disappoint me. They had aerial battles, dogfights in the sky. The whole city was in combat, just lasers flying everywhere. The web creatures invading. The good guys and the bad guys had to team up against this greater threat. But then at the end of the episode, the bad guy does something. I don't want to give too much away really because if anyone's watching this who's just got a few memories of the show I don't want to give away too much. I want you to go back and watch this show and give it another chance. But at the end of season two they did something which once again I had never really seen done in a cartoon series at that time. That, that They left it on such a cliffhanger with the bad guys victorious. He had betrayed the good guy and our hero is gone and he's just left thinking, oh, what the hell is going to happen now? And unfortunately, as a kid, I had to wait about a year and a half before season three started in the UK. And when you're a kid, a year and a half, that felt like five years. I mean, it felt like a long time between season two and three. I wasn't even sure we were going to get a season three. But when I found out it was going to come on, I was so hyped and so excited. And then I was just 
blown away when it began because the by season three the animated animation has improved significantly and the direction of the show as well it was very cinematic the pilot episode of season three with the the shots as we enter the world and the music it was noticeably different and improved even from season two the end of season two and the show just kept blowing my freaking balls off, basically, with the, the, the choices it made. By the end of the fourth episode, I was gobsmacked. Once again, anyone who's seen the show is going to know what I'm talking about. I mean, my jaw hit the floor. I was there with Dot. Like, no! And then, then when episode five begins and there's been a drastic change. I mean, they, they changed the status quo up a bit by having the main character taken out. But, which as I keep saying, wasn't something cartoon shows did. But then, to even more drastically change the status quo by episode five and expand the world that they had created so much, it was just amazing. I mean, it, it had me, you know. My late 90s, from 1997 through to 1999, mainframe entertainment owned my ass. Like, all I could think about, all day at school, all I thought about was Reboot and Beast Wars. I would go home and watch Reboot and Beast Wars on video. I would play with my Reboot and Beast Wars toys. Like, I was just obsessed with mainframe entertainment. They could do no wrong. And I still have a lot of affection for them. I think they're a very underrated uh, studio. They created some fantastic shows and even Beast Wars it's a part of the Transformers franchise so it gets a bit more recognition but it's kind of been lost in the sea of Transformer cartoon series that have been over the last couple of decades I mean there's been what a good 10 different cartoon series from Transformers now so Beast Wars gets kind of lost in the mix which is a shame because season two especially of Beast Wars I would say is the best Transformers we've ever had on screen but back to reboot anyway it just builds and builds and builds from the end of season two onwards. It is just constantly building itself up and it, it feels like it's going somewhere. It's not just episode, oh, an adventure, that's all over, back to the status quo, oh, another adventure, back to the status quo. It keeps building and building and building to a real climactic ending. And once season three ended, I was back to how I felt at the end of season two where this is it, we're not going to get any more. It really felt like Reboot was over, which was tragic because they had set up some plots that weren't necessarily a huge part of the main plot of season three, but they were setting up something even bigger, something that would expand the world of mainframe even more. And it was saddening to me to think that this was never going to get continued, this plot with basically a super virus, a, an, another bad guy who had taken over the supercomputer, who had taken over the Guardians. The Guardians being like the police, basically, of this computer cyber world. And I badly wanted to see how this would play out, how now we've got all the characters back together, everything's back to normal in the city of Mainframe. I wanted to see these characters who have now come together, new and old characters who we'd never really seen together before, all come together and fight this bigger bad. And we had to wait, I think it was five years until season four of Reboot came out, five years. And it finally happened. I never thought it would. We finally got another series of Reboot. It was only eight episodes, but damn, I am so glad we got what we did. It can be kind of frustrating that we only got eight episodes and really we could have done with at least four more but I'm happy for what I got. They continued and completed the storyline they had set up with Damon the super virus and then we got four episodes of just seeing mainframe kind of back to normal. It was the, the new status quo. We got to see characters who had moved back and a lot of people uh, seem to criticize uh, the last part of season four and I'm not really sure why, because for me personally, it was fun to see the new status quo, to see Matrix and Andrea living back in mainframe, and more importantly, to get the proper Bob back. Bob being the hero of the show. Now, I was never a fan of Glitch Bob. I didn't like the new voice actor, he just didn't seem like Bob, I didn't like his inflections. And... I didn't like the design. To me, the charm of Bob is that he was kind of a regular guy. 
He didn't have any superpowers. He wasn't even particularly big and muscly. He wasn't even particularly intelligent, really. But he would always find a way to do the right thing and to defeat the bad guys. So to make him a superhero with all these godlike superpowers, uh, I think it really takes away the charm of the character. And I guess they did it just so that he could kind of compete with Matrix. But I always wanted to see the original proper Bob with Matrix and how they would interact. And we got that in the last four episodes. We also got Megabyte's return, and it ends on a real cliffhanger. Which on the one hand is frustrating, because I think any Reboot fan wants to know how this story ends now. And the writers and the creators of Reboot, they still want to do this. They know how it ends. They had it planned out. They just had the rug pulled from under them by the networks for some reason. However, I'm glad the series ends where it does, rather than at the end of Season 3. Season 3 kind of wraps things up quite nicely, but I prefer that it's left open. I'm happy to think that Megabyte's still out there, and that the adventure continues, you know? I don't really want the series to end with Megabyte's dead, Hexadecimal's dead, everyone lives happily ever after. I kind of like that it's gonna live on. Even if we don't get to see it, the adventure continues. The one thing I didn't like about season four is that uh, they go back to the blue sky. Now this is only a minor nitpick really, but in season three, because of damage that had happened to the system, the sky at the start of the season was kind of an orangey purple colour. It always it looked like an eternal sunset. And sunset's a beautiful time of day in the summer. You know, when you've got the orange sky, leading down to kind of purpley, pinky, dark blue, and Mainframe was always like that, and I loved that. I thought it just set a really nice tone and atmosphere to those first four episodes of season three. So I, I, I found it kind of a shame that they went back to just being the, the sky blue colour in season four, even though it does make sense that the system has been repaired, so they would return to the way it looked originally in season one and two. Now, I always found the episodes that revolved around games to be my least favourite. I wanted to see the world of Mainframe. I wanted to see things happening to the characters that were more relevant to the world they lived in. When a game came down, it was pretty much just, oh well, we've got to win the game or we'll be nullified, i.e. kind of killed. But every now and then there was a fun one. My favourite being the Mad Max game. There's an episode called Bad Bob in Season 2. and it's really my only game episode that I'm a big fan of because it was just fun seeing Bob and Megabyte and all these characters in a Mad Max environment. And I guess that is the fun of the game episodes is that you're taking these characters and putting them into an environment that they wouldn't normally be in. You can have them in space, you can have them underwater, you know, you can have them uh, in a Pokemon style arena or an Austin Powers spoof. You can do some quite fun things with the concept, but it just didn't really appeal to me. Those segments always seemed a bit throwaway. Reboot's return for season four also meant we got more toys, which once again is somewhat heartbreaking because they planned even more, and there's even production photos of toys that were never released that were planned, and oh my god, it breaks my heart so much. Even more than the show ending, I'm more disappointed that we didn't get the rest of the toys that were planned. But at the same time, we are still bloody lucky to have got what we did. I never imagined when I was younger that they would make a figure of Matrix or Andrea or the Binomes. I am pleased to have got them, even though I kind of wish I'd had them earlier. If I'd have had them just three or four years earlier than they were released, I would have played the shit out of them. I would have loved them. As it was, I st I'm still glad I got have them, and I have them in my collection, but by the time they were released, I'd kind of grown out of playing with toys. So, I have them on display, and I still get them out every now and then and put on display, and, and love admiring them and seeing all these characters and figures together, but it's not the same as when I would have been able to really appreciate them playing with them, and creating my own adventures with the figures. Now, Half of the reboot toy line that was released is really easy to find, like they ended up on clearance. That's how easy they were to find, and you can find them cheap on eBay. But half of the, the figures that were released are really rare. There was the first ever wave of like five different characters, which is incredibly common and easy to get hold of. Then they released a lot of variants. The next sort of three waves of figures were basically just repaints, with some of them had binomes thrown in. Uh, but they were basically just the same characters done over again. Now, some of these were pretty cool. I'm not normally a fan of variants, but 
There was a figure of Bad Bob, who's basically Bob in his Mad Max get-up, which is really cool. And they did a figure of Enzo in his Guardian Cadet uniform, which I would absolutely love to get hold of, but I have never seen these on eBay. I don't know where these figures are. I have a few of them that I managed to get hold of at the time they were released. Um, a variant of Bob, as you can see here, and a couple of variants of Megabyte, but the rest of them, they, they've just disappeared. I don't know where they've gone. Even in reboot fan groups that I'm in, no one seems to have these figures, so who, who owns these toys? Then they released the season four wave of action figures, and the first wave of that is quite common, as the original wave was. But then they released a second wave, and this only got a very limited release, because this was just as the toy line was being cancelled. Now I'm lucky enough to have a couple of these. I've got the Web Rider, and I've got Ray Tracer, the Web Surfer, and I'm so glad to have those. They're pretty rare, but if you keep an eye on eBay, they do come up now and then, so they're not completely unobtainable. However, Rumour has it that a Captain Capacitor, who was the, the captain of the pirate ship in the show, was released. Now, I've heard that only three of these figures were released. I'm not sure who f came up with that number or how true it is. I'm starting to wonder if actually any of these figures were released at retail. I think maybe three were produced and maybe some people who worked at the toy company or maybe the creators of the show have one of these figures. But I... I find it hard to believe they were released at retail because you would think by now someone in the reboot collecting community would have at least one of these figures but I have never seen a photograph of these figures in anyone's collection. The only photos I've ever seen online are of the production samples that were on display at a toy fair so if these figures exist I don't know who has them because any hardcore reboot collector you would think would be in a reboot fan group and would show them off but there's no sign of them anywhere and I would give my right ball to have one of these Captain Capacitor figures. I would absolutely love it. I would pay quite a bit of money to, well, a reasonable amount of money to have a Captain Capacitor figure if it ever came up anywhere. Well, thank you for joining me on my thoughts on Reboot. Uh, I would implore anyone who's mildly interested in the show to give it a go. As I said earlier, maybe start with the episode Gigabyte at the end of Season 2 and be patient with it and once you get halfway through season three, I'd like to think you'd be hooked because I, I'm absolutely in love with this show. And it's a shame that people tend to remember it as the way it was in season one when the animation was a bit dodgy and it was a bit more kiddified because it went so far beyond that. It was so much more than that. And it really deserves more attention than it gets. I'd say it's one of the best animated shows of the 90s. It's up there with Batman the Animated Series and X-Men the Animated Series, in my opinion. I mean, those shows were great, but they didn't have the ongoing story arcs. They were still pretty episodic, whereas Reboot did something different. It pushed the envelope. It was ahead of its time. I don't really watch the new cartoon shows, to be honest, but I think even now you don't get ongoing story arcs in animation the way you do in live action TV shows like Lost or The Walking Dead. Whereas Reboot was doing this. Beast Wars did it too once it got to season two. I mean, mainframe entertainment, they knew what they were doing. So thanks for watching, guys, and be seeing you.